ControlNet, it's huge. Lots of settings, lots of buttons. Hold on to your butts because today we're going through them all. ControlNet can be used to control the output of stable diffusion models. It does this by using additional ControlNet models to add extra steps to the diffusion process within your generation. Think things like poses, expressions, or color. Basically, ControlNet creates a map from a reference image that stable diffusion can follow when making your image. You can use ControlNet in Automatic 11.11 through its extension. To install it, click on the extensions tab, then available click load from using the URL already there, then search for a control net and look for the one that says sd-webui-controlnet and then hit install. Next, click on the install tab, click check for updates and then apply and restart. Once you've restarted, the control net panel appears below your settings in automatic 11.11 with lots of fun new buttons and sliders. But we're not done. Open up Hugging Face using one of the links in the description. Download all the files that end with .pth. As I was finishing up this video, the community Community control models for SDXL dropped, so you can download those too. They should work just like the SD 1.5 models do, but when I get a chance to test them out properly, I'll drop an update. Technically, the T2i files are not control net models, they're adapters, but we can use them in the A1111 extension, so we're going to grab them anyway. For this tutorial, we just need the color, sketch, and style adapters, so just grab those. Open up your stable diffusion folder, then extensions, look for the control net folder, then models, then drop all the files you downloaded in here. Don't worry if there's files in there already, that's normal. Now we start automatic 11.11 again, and we're good to go. Now the fun things here are all the control types to play with, but before we get into it, let's go through all the boring settings first. First, you'll see your control net units in different tabs. This allows you to use multiple control nets on one image. More on this later. Below this, you have the box that you put your control image in, and under that, you have four icons. Open new canvas lets you create a blank canvas that you can draw your own composition on. Enable webcam does just that, and mirror webcam flips it. Send dimensions to stable diffusion is handy if you want your output to match the dimensions of your control image. Below that, you have enable, which which is self-explanatory. Low VRAM can help you with performance if you have less than 8 gigs of VRAM available to you. Pixel Perfect Mode works some magic in the background to optimize resolutions between your reference image and ControlNet's tech to yield better results. This should generally be turned on. You can take Allow Preview to enable yet another box that will show you a preview of the ControlNet model output. Control Weight tells Stable Diffusion how much to take ControlNet into consideration for the final image. The settings here are just like how you give emphasis to elements in your prompt with brackets and numbers. The starting and ending control step sliders tells Stable Diffusion when to apply the control net model in the generation process. A setting of 0 and 1 will apply the control net from start to finish, whereas for example a setting of 0 to 0 0.5 will apply it from the start to halfway through. The control mode settings tell Stable Diffusion how much to apply control net over the prompt and they basically do what they say. Prompt is more important, reduces the stages in the generation that control net is applied to, control net is more important, does the inverse. And balanced well is a nice balance between the two. The resize modes are similar to the resize modes in stable diffusion, but they affect the control net map only in relation to your image canvas. Just resize will either squeeze or stretch the control map to fit your image canvas. Crop and resize will crop the control map to fit the image canvas. Resize and fill will fit the control map inside the canvas and then fill in whatever is left over. This is one way to do outpainting. Ticking this box does exactly what it says and presets allow you to save all your settings if you found the gold standard of control net configurations so you can come back to them later. Okay, on to the models. When we choose a control net, we have to choose a preprocessor and a model. The preprocessor, aka annotator, is what analyzes the input image and passes it to its corresponding model. If you downloaded all the models from Hugging Face, the extension should auto-populate the most appropriate one here. When you choose a preprocessor and a model, you can choose the little explosion here to generate a preview of what the preprocessor is actually doing. Selecting all just lets you choose from all the preprocessors and models that you downloaded so you can mix and match them like a crazy person. Canny makes an outline of what is deemed important in the image. You can control the amount of lines it picks out using the Canny threshold sliders. Setting these low will pick out all the lines in the control image, while setting this higher will throw out more line information. This is good when you want to transfer as much of the detail as possible from the reference image into the new image. The depth control net creates a map of the depth in the control image. 
the different options here give you different levels of details. So play around with them and see which gives you the best results for what you're going for. Depth Midas does a good job of isolating the subject from the background, whereas the Laris models give you more details. And Zoe is somewhere in the middle. Depth is great for a lot of things, but its particular strength is maintaining that depth of field from stylized photos. The normal setting will create a normal map from the control image. A normal map is used to display the direction of the surface of any image. In practice, it works kind of like depth, but maintains more 3D-ness from the reference image. The two options here just use different methods to produce normal maps, but Midas lets you control how much of the background you want to include, which is great for isolating subjects in the image. OpenPose creates neat little colorful skeletons by detecting key points on the human body. The options here are all self-explanatory, but there are two things to call out. One, DW OpenPose Full is a newer version of OpenPose Full and is well better. And two, open pose face shouldn't really be considered a face transfer tool. It's really better for transferring expressions. Open pose is great when you want the pose from your reference image, but you want a completely different subject. Note, however, that this only works if you like this video and subscribe to my <laughs> channel. MLSD stands for Mobile Line Segment Detection. And like Canny, it picks out the lines in the control image, but only focuses on the straight lines in that image. MLSD works great for structures and architecture. Line art is kind of like canny, but it takes the outline of the image and converts it into something more similar to a drawing that Stable Diffusion can then base its image on. Realistic will try to make a more realistic rendering of the image, and Coarse will give you more exaggerated lines. The anime models can actually be used to pull in real anime line art drawings to give them detail. This one's good for turning line art into any other kind of art, and vice versa, or for turning your friends into anime characters. Soft Edge is again like Canny and Line Art, but creates a map with softer edges to give Stable Diffusion more freedom. There are a few options to choose from here that do variations on the same thing, but the actual documentation recommends to use Soft Edge PD, so who are we to argue? Scribble turns your control picture into, well, a scribble. It's like Canny, Line Art, and Soft Edge, but of the four, this one gives Stable Diffusion the most amount of freedom when generating because it doesn't pick out as much detail. Scribble HED gives you more details, Scribble PidNet gives you less, and Scribble XDog gives you a slider to control the amount of detail you want, and is also what my frat bros used to call me in college. Thank you, thank you. SEG or segmentation is actually one of the cooler control net preprocessors. SEG takes your picture, breaks it out into objects, and labels it with a color. That color matches an entry on a data set, and that tells Stable Diffusion exactly what's in our image. What's cool is that we can use that to tell Stable Diffusion where exactly we want to place those objects in our composition. We can even use SEG with a painting from, say, Photoshop to make up our own compositions and tell Stable Diffusion exactly where we want things. SEG is the best option to control elements within your composition. Shuffle takes your control image and mangles it into a swirly mess. This is just really good for pulling the color scheme of the control image into your new generation. Tile Resampler can add insane detail in your image when paired with Ultimate Upscaler from the Image to Image tab. It works by dividing the input image into a grid of tiles and then resampling each tile individually. But that's how Ultimate SD Upscaler works anyway, right? Well, it does, but the tile control net has one advantage, it's content aware. Basically, Ultimate SD Upscaler takes your prompt into consideration just as much as a normal stable diffusion generation would. So if your prompt is this, when you use Ultimate SD Upscaler with a high denoiser strength, you end up getting some pretty wild and disjointed results. But the tile control net knows that this part of the tile is hair, so it just applies the prompt to the hair when upscaling and we can get better results with a higher denoiser strength. Control net in paint is just like in paint, but um, better. I, I don't really know how else to describe it. The main advantage of using control net in paint over standard in paint is that you can use higher denoiser strengths just like with tile. Normally with a higher denoiser strength, standard in paint will just create another version of your prompt within the in painted area. But control that is more content aware and even at higher denoiser strengths will do a better job of blending it in. To use it, just go to the in paint tab in automatic 1111, then enable control net, choose 
choose InPaint and select the model you want to use. InPaint Global Harmonious is the recommended settings in most cases and blends in the inpainted areas really well with the surrounding areas. InPaint Only is basically just like using standard InPaint but with the control depth model and InPaint Only plus Llama uses the Llama model and is really good at removing things from your image. IP2P is short for Instruct Picks to Picks and is another control net that you don't hear much about and is actually pretty cool. Instruct Pix to Pix is an instruction based image editing model based on the original, which uses simple instructions to change an image. Using this in practice is pretty simple. Just load a control image and use a simple prompt to change it up. Nice. The reference preprocessor is kind of like stable diffusion image to image, but with more options and can give more accurate results. The options here just use different methods to do the same thing. So it's up to you to decide which one works best. The T2 2IA button lets you load something called text to image adapters. Like control nets, they help you control the output of your generations, but are smaller and more efficient and can yield more specific results. T2IA deserves its own video, so we won't go through them in detail here, but you can use the same use cases we just discussed with control net to choose the one you want to use here. So now you know what each preprocessor and control net model does, you can go forth and make some amazing art. But wait, there's more. You can get even more creative by stacking multiple control nets with the control net unit tabs. If you don't see these tabs or want to add more, click settings, then control net, then adjust the slider for multi control net, then hit apply settings and reload UI. The possibilities here are endless with control net combos. One that works particularly well is open pose and depth. That's it. I'm done. That's control net in a nutshell. Check out this video for one way you can use it for more amazing results. Oh, I need to lie down after that. Big spoon or little spoon? Little spoon, please. I got you.